Hey guys, what's up? This is Bree from WRSU, and I'm here with the Driver Era. So, what's up, you guys? How have all the festivals been this summer? And like now that summer's coming to an end, how do you feel about them? It's been really good. We've only we've only played a few now, actually. It's been um, it's been lighter on the festival run because we I've been we've been doing other things, sort of. Like I've been filming, and he's been producing. I've, a I've bunch. been to more festivals than I've played this year, actually. I think so. Really? Yeah. Because we went to uh, that Sean White one. Oh yeah, that was fun. Yeah, because our, that was our, fun. our, our buddy was taking stuff. pictures, so he was like, "Yo, we have like free tickets." We're like, "All right, whatever." Uh, yeah. But no, but the turnout's been really amazing. Like, it's really cool to see already because this is fairly a fairly new project. It's really cool to see people actually be invested already. Um, probably because of the past work that we've done throughout the years, but but that's that's really rewarding. And um, we still have a lot of stuff to figure out creatively, but it's been a good journey so far. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so you guys got up there as a five piece today with your siblings still. Is that kind of weird for you to get on there and do like all new songs? Um, I know this is now the driver era, so it is a different project, but like, do you guys feel like you still play really well together even in these new songs? That was, that was one thing. As we were walking on stage, actually, I was I was saying this jokingly, but it was it's true. So I was like, all right, show number 357 or something. This is how many shows we played. So it was like, almost an entire it, year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We played, so we played a, we got a lot of hours of playing live shows, and so this was just kind of like a walk in the park for us. We were like, all right, let's go. We'll play a quick 20 minute set, and it's over. You know, not much to even think about. But and that that also is some of the creative stuff that we 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 have yet to figure out, which is um, just as like time goes, you know, you kind of like just let it fall into place. Um, yeah. Um, and you guys have a ton of energy on stage, um, especially like I know you always like dance and put on an amazing show. Um, where are you guys like when you're on stage? I'm just curious. Like, are you? Do you feel like you can vibe with the fans, or are you like really lost in the music? Like, how is that feeling? It really, honestly, depends. If the crowd is really active and they're really present, it's really easy to to be there with them. Um, it really is reliant on to the, on the crowd as far as like what you experience. And what they experience too. It's 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 very much about people playing live, which is kind of sick. Yeah, I'm I'm just trying not to be pissed off. Like usually, like some shit will go wrong, like technically. So like there's something going wrong with my pedal board, so it just didn't work. So I was like kind of like, all right, let me just try and not not be too angry. Was what I was thinking about. But, yeah. yeah. Um. So you guys have been working separately. Uh, you're like you're in Vancouver, I believe, filming and. Uh, you're still in California. What is it like writing, you know, in two different countries? Like, do you guys, are you guys able to agree on things, like, when you're so far away from each other, or? <laughs> That's actually funny that. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> to be honest, it, it, it doesn't work. It hasn't worked. We tried it a couple times. I went out to Vancouver to work on a couple, just, like, kind of figure out tracks, see if we were vibing stuff. And, like, we weren't. Um, and so... Basically, this whole year has been like a, a trial and error learning experience with that, where it's like, oh, maybe this isn't a good idea. Like, if, if you're going to film a TV show, maybe we don't make music. And then we wait until that's done and then kind of reattack it. Because I, I live in the studio, basically. I'm in there 12 hours a day just going in. But it's, you know, he's obviously got other things on his mind. I mean, he could probably tell you more about that. But, well, it's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah, and we're fighting right now. <laughs> I don't think Rocky and I have ever legitimately fought. Yeah, no. Um, but no, it it absolutely is that you know we went every day. We went from spending every single waking moment together to to being in different countries, um, and having and, and somewhat different priorities for the time being. Um, the goals are still the same, and and what we want to achieve is still the same thing. We just have to sort of realign how to make that work. Um, and I actually think today was a big moment for us, and uh, and how much we enjoyed being up on stage. Like it was, it was really, it was really like good for my soul, <laughs> like straight up. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it's so so, but it's it's all, it's looking good, actually. Like despite whatever whatever like is going on, like it's yeah, it's yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it all is, it all is like, we're still doing what we love. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, so obviously you guys have 
you know, gone from a five piece to a two piece. Um, so maybe your inspirations and you, the things you listen to kind of show through a little bit more and you have, you know, full creative control. So who are some of those inspirations that you feel like you take from now or, you know, just those in the past that you would like to see more in your music? I would, I mean, you know, it always, it always comes back to kind of what we grew up listening to. So there's always like a little bit of Prince, a little bit of NXS, a little bit of Michael Jackson and probably everything we do. And then, you know, I've, I've kind of been recently just getting into a little more of the like electronic scene and kind of the electronic dance scene. Uh, so that's kind of something I've been, I've been messing around with a lot. Uh, I just I kind of like naturally it like it, it's it comes easy for me like that that side of music so I've been doing a lot of remixes and a, and a lot of things like that and I, I like that it's fun um, do you have any my my influences are, are so inconsistent and stupid <laughs> but that's kind of what's exciting like is, is yeah it's just like really being open to like wherever music's going almost whatever yeah, because I like. Oftentimes, you get the, the question, "Who's your dream collaboration?" And for a lot of people, you know, it should be like the Beatles. That's that's a pretty good. Was that your next question? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was just gonna say I like. Know. You're already like, if it was. We're moving. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm just saying like instead of it being the Beatles, it should be someone that's like making waves today and it's like really shaping music today. So I, I, so that's why my influences always change. Yeah. Are there any artists like coming up now that, thank you, that you're like kind of looking forward to possibly collaborating with? Calvin Harris, no, I'm kidding. Actually, straight up, I would love to hang out with uh, Calvin Harris. Yeah. That'd be sick. Real collaborations. Honestly, Calvin would be sick. I would gladly collaborate with Calvin. Uh, but who would be like? We honestly, there's no one. There's no like legitimate collaboration right. that's in the near future. Okay. Yep. But we're we're always down to get in the studio and make music yeah. with people. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and what about like in the show? Is there any possibility that one of your songs can make it onto the show's soundtrack? Possibly. Are you singing in the show? <laughs> uh, I, I actually don't know yet. Okay. But the creator of the show one day was like, "Hey, do you want to sing on the show?" And I was oh like. God. If it works, I don't want it to be. I know Riverdale because it, it's the same creator as Riverdale. I yeah. love this song. Um, this song is freaking sick. Fucking, oh, oh, they can't it's hear it. Show. It's body count. Yeah, yeah, this song yeah, is sick. Yeah, yeah, Jesse Reyes. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it works. Yeah. Um. So, what about in like the near future from now? I know you guys put out Preacher Man and Afterglow. Um. Okay, backtrack a little bit. What was the statement you guys were trying to make with those songs and putting, like, why those songs first? Those are the songs that were ready to be to be released. Those are the songs that had the most support amongst our community, okay. sort of. Um, and they just made the most sense for the time being. Um, the songs stand on their own. They don't they don't belong to a bigger record or anything like that. But uh, yeah. There's, in the, Afterglow and Preacher Man are kind of like polar opposites. Like, they don't really go together, but that's right. kind of what's special about them. It's just like, yo, it's almost like we don't have a genre. So, here you go. That's kind of what those songs yeah. mean to me. Um, Is that kind of like insane for you guys to just be like, we don't have a genre. We can make whatever we want. Our fans are still going to listen. I mean, assuming they're pretty devoted. Like, is that, like, what is that? like for you well I have a lot of things to say about that okay but I'll try to keep it brief um, okay. a lot of my favorite artists one of them who actually tragically died recently was um, XXX Sinashian. and he was so interesting because he literally had like these amazing hit rap songs and then released an acoustic record um, which was still like rap but it was like acoustic so I was just I just think that was like so cool and I also think that a lot of artists today talk about how people consume music and Spotify and all these things, and people not necessarily being strict on genre. They don't care. Yeah. People don't care. They just want to hear a good song. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know if that 
necessarily matters anymore. Yeah. You can you can ha you can just make music and whatever you're feeling. And that's also why my influences always change because yeah. I don't listen to one genre. I listen to them all. I guess you got to think like at one point in history, people were just smashing rocks together and people were listening. <laughs> like think of it, music has come a long way. You never know where it could go. Um, okay, so what is in the near future for you guys? Are there any other songs you are going to release? Um, maybe that you played today, uh, and been, what's going on? There's been a lot of there's been a lot of talks of, of releasing something, uh, and usually people would be like, "Yeah, we're going to release music at some point," but I'm like, I'm not going to sit over here and lie to you. I don't really know. We don't really know what right. it looks like. Uh, there's we're, really there's really no set date on if anything's yeah. gonna happen. We're honestly. perfectionists. Yeah, yeah, we tend. To and we're insatiable. Yeah. And even when we write a good song, like it takes a lot for us to want to put ourselves out there in that way. So, um, the goal, yeah, the goal is to is to definitely like keep it full stride and, and yeah. going, you know. But uh, as of now, we'll see. And last question, um, you guys have been doing music basically your whole life like you know you and now going from one band like pretty much straight into another one um what what do you think you guys would be doing if you didn't have music though it's kind of a i mean i guess you could say acting that's too easy though something else what would you i mean yeah. do you have another like creative I'd be, I'd, i would love to be a struggling like I'd love to be a struggling painter. Okay. Like just like straight up have a studio loft somewhere in Brooklyn or something, yeah. and just paint on walls and stuff. I yeah. think that'd be fun. Okay. But it would it would it'd be a hard way to live. But yeah, I know a few of those. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Damn. I don't know. I'm probably. I honestly have no would idea. You be an Uber driver. I would pro I mean, that's, <laughs> no, that's probably that could be in my near future if shit doesn't get going. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Yeah, I'm not pulling that out. That's like the you were predicting it within the name. Yeah, there's plenty of times I'll get I'll get an Uber or a Lyft, and I'll start talking to the driver. They're like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm a musician," and they're they're a musician. I'm like, "Damn!" Like, especially in California, yeah. everybody you meet that drives for one of those companies yeah. is is a struggling artist. So. I was just in Nashville, and the first car I got into was like a Grammy award-winning producer, and I was like, "Is this normal?" Like, I don't, I don't know, but that sounds like pretty much the same thing. I also know like very successful film screenwriter that um, like super ultra successful. He drives Uber for fun, like just to like meet people and to have that experience. So that's that's also kind of interesting too. When you just like even though you're madly successful, also the guy, my ex girlfriend was picked up in a car once, not Uber, but was picked up in a car by one of the guys who is like from the family that owns Gap. So billionaire, billionaire dude, but he just wants to drive to have something to do. So at, at the end of the day, it's like, people just got to stay occupied. Yes. Shout out to Uber Driver, so for getting us yeah. places. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, this has been The Driver Era on WRSU FM New Brunswick. Thanks, guys.